this is a piecewise function and I'm being asked to graph it. So let's remember that piecewise function has, well, as many pieces as we have lines. So this piecewise function is going to have two pieces. This piece up here, we'll make that the green piece, and this piece down here, which is going to be the black piece. And I'm going to start with, uh, I like to start with the left piece, because I, I like to work from left to right. It's the way I read, and it's the easiest way to do a lot of these problems. So I have to start, I'm going to have x plus 3 squared, where x is less than or equal to negative 2. Now, one thing that really, really is important and really helps with these piecewise functions is that you can read this function right here and know that the parent function is x squared and that the graph of it is going to be a parabola. Now, I'm not exactly sure where that parabola is going to end up, but I know that it's going to be a parabola. So. I think I'll start, I mean, if I know the functions really well in transformations, I don't need to do this part. But it's, it's always a good idea you can start with a, with a little t square. And I have my x, and then this is going to be x plus 3 squared. Now, I only need it where x is less than negative 2, less than or equal to negative 2. So I think I'll just start at negative 2. So if x equals negative 2, then I'm going to have negative 2 plus 3, that would be positive 1, and I'm going to square it. Okay, so it's going to be right there at negative 2, 1. Now I'm going again, less than negative 2, so how about if I try negative 3? Negative 3 gives me negative 3 plus negative 3, which is 0. 0 squared is 0. Well, that's interesting. How about if I try negative 4? Well, negative 4 is going to be negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, and I'm going to square that, and I have 1 again. So I can already see that I'm going to have, so at negative 2, I'm going to have the point 1. At negative 3, I'm going to have the point 0. And at negative 4, I'm going to have the point 1. Whoops, I made that at negative 5, bad me. Negative 4, I'm going to have the point 1. Now I know that a parabola only has one vertex. So this is going to be the vertex right here. And I can see that this graph is going to look like that. And it's going to keep on going because it's for all x is less than negative 2. And at x equals negative 2, it's going to have a solid dot because it is less than or equal to negative 2. So that's, that. that's the green piece of this function. Now, the black piece of this function, oh, let me erase the black a little bit there. The black piece says, well, it's equal to negative 1, where x is greater than negative 2. Well, negative 1 right here, that's a constant function. So that's just going to be a straight line. So where x equals negative 2, I'm going to have an open circle, because it is not included. It's just greater than negative 2. And it's going to be greater than negative 2. It's going to go like that forever. Um, you have to be careful on these problems. There's a real tendency to take this last graph right here and say, well, it has to be greater than negative 2, so it's going to start at negative 1. But that's only thinking in integers. Because, well, this point right here, negative 1.5, that's greater than negative 2. And negative 1.8, that's greater than negative 2. I go all the way up to x equals negative 2, and, oh, you know what? I am not at negative 1. I am at negative 2, so it has to be right here. The graph is a little bit off, and it looks like, looks like that. So now I'm going to address the domain and range, and I put them up here. So the domain is all of the valid x values. In other words, every x value that also has a y value is part of the domain. Well, for my green piece, I can see that I am going all the negative x's. They're going to be just fine. They are all going to be part of this green graph. That's why it has a little arrow right there. So my far left point is negative infinity. And I follow that green graph. I kind of 
follow it all the way over to here, and I see that it stops at 2, and it includes x equals 2. But then the next piece starts at negative 2 and goes positive forever. So I've included negative 2 in my domain, and I've gone to the right forever. All the x values are good. So that is my domain, negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, range is a little bit more tricky because I'm looking at y values. Well, my lowest y value, hmm, my lowest y value is here at negative 1. And it includes negative 1, so I know that I'm going to start at negative 1. But now I have a gap. I'm sorry that this, I have to recalibrate my board. But if you remember, this, this point right here, that my vertex is at negative 3, 0. So I have a gap between negative 1 and 0. So negative 1 is part of the range, and it just starts like that. There is no, it's just a, it's just a straight line. It's just negative 1. And then I do union, and I start at 0, which is included. And my, my y values now go all the way up to infinity. So that is the range. So I have the domain, the range, and a, well, I would say a nice graph, but it's, it's kind of a funky graph. But it's a graph of the, of the piecewise function. 